final leg. Welcome back. We are talking about the NCAA championships. The women's and the men's performances are going to be going down starting on Wednesday, moving all the way till Saturday. Right now, we're going to be jumping into some predictions of the women's sprints, jumps, and hurdles. Check out the video on the men's side, and you're going to see my predictions for the top three there. But let's start off with the women's. First off, that women's 100 meter dash. Now, I'm going to be going backwards three to one. First off, third place in the 100 meters favor Ophili from LSU. Now she has been tearing up the track. Of course, we've been seeing up and downs and back and forths with Abby Steiner, but I think she's gonna get third place in the 100. She's run 10.93 seconds on two occasions this year already. She's the SEC champion. She was the best uh, performer at the East Regional. Um, she's also run 11.02 seconds into a negative 1.3 meter per second headwind. So her consistency is unmatched this year. Many are comparing Ophelia's form to that of Elaine Thompson, right? The super efficient running form, just her form, not saying her times or anything like that. But I think there are a couple other ladies who are a bit better over 100 meters, but Ophelia going to get that third place in terms of my prediction there. Second place, Melissa Jefferson from Coastal Carolina. She's number two in the NCAA this year. She's run 10.88 seconds. She also has times of 11 flat and 11.07 seconds. Now, she's also the indoor NCAA champion at 60 meters, and it was kind of a surprise to people, but really put her on the map. And she wasn't great through prelims at the East prelims, right? She only finished seventh place in 100 meters and she was third in her quarterfinals. So kind of, you know, a little bit down, but I don't think that's too much to worry about. She's been pretty consistent and I think she's a force to be reckoned with. Melissa Jefferson, I think she's going to get that second place. First place, I, I can't see anybody else outside of first aside from Julian Alfred. Unless somebody makes a mis unless Alfred makes a mistake, I think Alfred is going to get that NCAA win. She's an NCAA leader, 10.81 seconds. She also has times of 10.80 windy, which she ran twice, two windy 10.80 seconds. She's run 10.98 and 11 flat. So she has probably the best consistency of any of the 100 meter women in the NCAA this year. She has an NCAA record at 60 meter dash, despite unfortunately getting fifth place in that final. She ran that record in the prelims. And she was one of the top athletes for the past couple years from 2019, indoors 2020 and 2021, but she's had some ups and downs. I think this is her year though. I think Julian Alfred is going to get that NCAA championship win in the women's 100 meter dash. Couple others to note, you didn't hear me know Abby Steiner. I think she's not going to finish in the top three here. She might get fourth. She could finish in the top three, don't get me wrong, but I think she's just gonna finish just outside the top three. She has a personal best of 10.92, right? She's been consistent in the low 11s, um, but her form is kind of rough, right? She really doesn't have that really efficient form that some of the other ladies do, and I think that might hindered her a bit at SECs. We never know though, we might um, see what happens. Ophelia beat her at SECs and was much faster at regionals in the 100 meters, but again, she could surprise. And I think the 200 meters is probably a little bit better of her event. Kemba Nelson is also one to look out for from Oregon, right? She's a 2021 NCAA indoor champion in the 60 meter dash and has a personal best of 10.98 seconds from last year. This year, she's run 11.05 seconds and she has a 10.85 windy time at prelims this year. So Nelson cannot be counted out. Also have to note Canova Davis who competes for Texas. She's also gonna be in the mix there. But again, Ophelia third, Jefferson second, and Alfred first. Those are my picks for the 100 meters top three. Moving up to the 200 meters, we have to talk about a Navia battle. I think she's getting third place. Now, she hasn't been in as, as much of the conversation because of so much talk between Ophili and Steiner and um, and all that, but I think Battle is going to be able to pull things through. Of course, competes for Ohio State. Of course, made the Tokyo Olympic team in the 200 last year, running sub 22 seconds. This year, her best is 22.28 seconds. She ran a very fast 300 meters. She won the Big Ten Championships. She was third at the East Prelims and she was third indoors in the 200. So keep a lookout for a Navia battle. But I am kind of split on this. I'm picking Navia battle for third, but I'm gonna note Canova Davis from Texas. Now, I think she might be able to get third also. I'm, I'm really split on both of them, but Davis has run 22.26 seconds. She was second at the Big 12 Championships and second at the West Prelims. And she has some very fast 100 meter times. She's already run sub 11, so I think that's gonna bode well for her 200 meters. I'm kind of split, but I'm probably picking battle to get third place. Moving up though, 
In second in place, I'm looking at Abby Steiner. I don't think she's gonna get the championship win here. Abby Steiner, she's run 22.05 seconds. She was second at SEC's to Ophelia. We might see her run sub 22 here, but I think she's still gonna come up short. She also has run 22.07. She ran 22.09 indoors, and she has a windy 22.01. Also, her 400 meters is very strong, right? We saw her run that extremely fast relay split at SECs. But regardless, I think Abby Steiner is going to finish second place here. Of course, picking for first place, favor Ophelia from LSU. I think this is Ophelia's stronger event. Remember, I picked her for third place in 100 meters. I think um, she's really going to perform here. She has that NCAA record, 21.96 seconds. She's an SEC champion, and she's also the top athlete coming out of the East prelims. Other times of 22.04, 22.08, and she's also previously a 400 meter runner, right? When she was in Nigeria, before she came to LSU, she was competing in the 400. So she's actually been dropping down and really performing. That's gonna bode well for what I think she's gonna be able to do at the NCAA championships. A couple of the honorable mentions, of course, Kennedy Flannel. She's been a mainstay in the 200 meters for the past couple years for Texas. 22.23 best. She's been very consistent and she's a big 12 champion. Definitely one to look out for. Also keep a lookout for Adeleke, also from Texas. She's run 50.70 in the 400 meters, but she's only going for that 200 meters, all in. She's run 22.59. So I think her cutting out the 400 and going all in on the 200 might bode well for what she's able to do here. Of course, Melissa Jefferson, I picked her for second in the 100 meters, but coming from Costa Carolina, she's run 22.46 seconds. Of course, she's much better at 100, but she could have a breakout 200 meters here as well. And then Rosemary Chukuma competes for Texas Tech. She's run 22.33 seconds. Not as consistently fast, but she's the one to look out for. 200 meters, Anavia Battle or Canova Davis in third place, not sure. Abby Steiner second, Ophili in first place. Up to that 400, finishing off on these sprints. I have Talitha Diggs getting third place in the women's 400 meters. Competes for Florida. She was the NCAA indoor champion at 400. She ran 50.98 seconds indoors. So she's already broken 51 seconds indoors. She was also second place last year at the outdoor NCAA championships. Though she was fourth at SECs this year, she was actually first in the East prelim. So I think Talitha Diggs is going to get that third place. She's definitely going to be one um, who's really going to attack. She's going to be a gamer. So keep a lookout for her. Second place, Stacey Ann Williams from Texas. She's run 50 seconds multiple times this season. 50.21, 50.29, 50.56, 50.66, 50.70. Multiple times under 51 seconds. I think she is a clear number two Big 12 champion, number one in the West prelims. Stacey Ann Williams is, I really think she's gonna get that second place. First place, I think everyone can predict Cherokee Young from Texas A&M. She's run sub 50 seconds. The only person in the NCAA to do so this year, 49.87 seconds. She's also run 50 flat, 50.45, and 50.80. She was second at SECs, but to Britton Wilson, who's not running the 400. So she doesn't have to worry about her. She was also second at West prelims, but the prelims are just the prelims. Cherokee Young, I think she's clearly gonna take this win here and probably gonna run another sub 50 second time. So keep a lookout for her. Also have to look out for Kennedy Simon from Texas. She's run 50.26 and she was second at the Big 12 Championships. Alexis Holmes from Kentucky. She's always in the mix. She was third at the SEC Championships and she's run 50.74 seconds. So that's the women's 400 meters. Talitha Diggs third, Stacey Ann Williams second, Cherokee Young in first place. Jumping down to the hurdles, there's a lot of women in this race, but I think there's some clear cut women who are you know kind of solid in the top three here. Akira Nugent for Baylor. She's run 12.45 seconds, which is number two in the NCAA this year. She also has some windy times of 12.72 and then a legal time of 12.74. Uh, She's very strong, but maybe not as consistent as some of the other ladies. She was second place at Big 12 and she was eight at the West prelim. So I think Nugent is gonna be a solid third place here. Second place, Paula Solomon for North Carolina a &T. Probably the most consistent person after our number one here who we'll talk about. She has a 12.63 personal best here of this year, 12.66 also, 12.78, as well as a windy 12.76. She won East prelims, she won Big South, her conference championship. So I think Solomon is gonna be the one to get that second place and really the one to solidify that there. First place, I think many can predict this. It's Aaliyah Armstrong from LSU. She is a clear best in the NCAA, the absolute clear best. Now, her best time outdoors this year is only 12.61 seconds. 
but she's been in a plethora of windy races. 12.33 seconds, 12.46 seconds, and 12.55 seconds. There's no one who's beating Aaliyah Armstrong, right? She's an SEC champion. She probably would have had her biggest competition come from Grace Stark from Florida, but Grace Stark unfortunately got injured, so Stark is not gonna be in the competition. That opens up the door for Aaliyah Armstrong. So Nugent third, Salmon second, and Aaliyah Armstrong in first place. A couple other ladies though, Demisha Roswell from Texas Tech, 12.44, which is the NCAA lead, but she's really just not nearly as consistent as some of the other ladies. Um, Masai Russell from Kentucky, she's very consistent and I think she could finish top three, but we'll have to see what she's able to step up and do. And then Kalia Robinson from Texas A&M, she has a best of 12.71 seconds, but she also has a windy, a windy times of 12.57 and 12.60 seconds. So there's a couple of other ladies. Um, there's Renaya Jones from U uh, University of Central Florida, um, who's also not too consistent, but she could be in the mix. So those are my top three for the women's 110 meter hurdles. Finishing up on the track, women's 400 meter hurdles, I think everyone's going to know who the top, you know, top two probably athletes are here, but third place, I have Masai Russell, who I just noted as an honorable mention in the 100 meter hurdles. She competes for Kentucky, 55.36 personal best this year in the 400 meter hurdles. I think she's kind of a clear number three. She's doubling back from those 100 meter hurdles, but she has times of 55.44 seconds and 55.41 seconds both better than the next best woman. So Masai Russell, she's really, really a clear number three here. Second place, Anna Hall from Florida. Now she's gonna be doubling up in the heptathlon and the 400 meter hurdles, but her personal best is 54.91 seconds. So again, clear and away from the rest of the women. She should be a very solid number two, second place here. And of course, number one, Britton Wilson for Arkansas. She had that amazing performance at the SEC championships with the 400, the 400 hurdles and the four x four. Of course, the NCAA leader, 53.75 seconds. She's also run 54.23, 54.37, 54.65 and 54.87 seconds. All of those times are better than anyone in the NCAA this year. So she is the ultimate clear number one in the 400 meter hurdles. Couple other honorable, honorable mentions. We have Lauren Hoffman from Duke and we have Deshae Wise from Texas A&M, but Russell third, Hall second, and Wilson first, women's 400 meter hurdles. We're gonna finish things off with those jumps. First off, women's long jump. I'm picking Tyra Giddens for third place. Now, she was second place last year and she hasn't been as consistent outdoors in terms of some of the high marks. She's only jumped 6.69 meters outdoors, but she does have a windy 6.82 meter jump. She's been focusing on the high jump and long jump, no heptathlon, so I think that's gonna bode very well for what she's able to do at these NCAAs. Second place, I'm looking at Monet Nichols. Now, I spoke about her a couple weeks ago, competes for Texas Tech. She was second place indoors, both her and Jasmine Moore, who ultimately won, jumped 6.57 meters, but of course, Monet Nichols got second on the countback. She's already jumped 6.97 meters outdoors. That is a huge performance. It was a world leader for a moment in time a couple weeks back. She also has jumps of 6.80 meters, 6.74 meters, and a windy jump of 6.89 meters. So very, very consistent. And Monet Nichols is an absolute gamer. So picking her for second place, of course, that first place, Jasmine Moore from Florida, indoor NCAA champion. Like I said, she tied with the same performance as Monet Nichols, but won on the countback. She has a 6.83 meter best this year, also jumps of 6.82, 6.75, and 6.73. Very, very consistent. Jasmine Moore is going to get that win, but I think just edging out Monet Nichols here. A couple other women, of course, Ruth Osoro competes for Texas Tech. I think she's a little bit better in the triple jump. And then Claire Bryant, um, she's also very consistent. So number three, Tyra Giddens. Number two, Mon Monet Nichols. Number one, Jasmine Moore. I think that's a top three in the long jump. Finishing things off, women's triple jump. <laughs> I think we're gonna see a lot of overlap here, but third place, I just mentioned Ruth Usoro competes for Texas Tech and Nigeria. She's actually the defending champion personal best of 14.50 meters, which she jumped last year. This year, she's only at 13.84 meters. So she's a little bit, needs to pick things up a little bit. She has jumped a windy 13.94 meters, but she's you know, shown that she can hit something very, very big. Ruth Osoro, looking at her for third place. Natricia Hopper from Florida. I think she's gonna be getting that second place. She finished second place indoors in the NCAA. She has a best indoors of 14.10 meters. 
and outdoors she's already jumped 14.03 meters as well as a windy 14.18 meters but that consistency there from hopper is really key and that's going to propel her to that second place Finally, the NCAA champion from indoors, I think she's gonna follow things up outdoors. Jasmine Moore doubling up in the long jump and the triple jump here. I think she's gonna get that first place. She's jumped 14.07 meters, but she also has a windy 14.46 meters, as well as 14.57 indoors and 14.55 indoors. So she is absolutely consistent, probably the most consistent athlete that we have this year in the NCAA. Definitely look out for more to get that win here. And a couple other honorable mentions, Akilah Smith from Texas. She's jumped 1408, but not nearly as consistent. Notice, I've been saying that consistency is super important across the board in all the events, right? And then Ruta Lasane competes for Texas Tech. She was fourth indoors. She jumped 13.80 meters outdoors, but I think she really has to step things up to really kind of get in the fold. She jumped 14.20 meters last year, so we'll see what she's able to do. And then Makisha Welcome from Oklahoma. She has a windy 13.89 meter, so she could get in the mix, but that's my top three in the women's triple jump. Ruth Osoro, Texas Tech third. Natricia Hooper for Florida in second place. Jasmine Moore from Florida in that first place, getting that win there, doubling up in the long jump and the triple jump. So make sure you check out the men's side. Of course, there's tons and tons of athletes who are gonna be dominating over the next four days on the men's side, on the women's side. Let me know what you think about the relays, right? I didn't even mention we saw a plethora of different women break the NCAA record in the four by four. Let me know what you think. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.